a community of women flourished in rural Germany and a monastery at Dalhain 1,000 years ago. After several centuries, a group of researchers at the site are diligently examining medieval artifacts. However, while examining the remains of one former resident, the group uncovers a shocking and incredible secret that has the potential to rewrite human history. A rare pigment that rewrites history was discovered by scientists while studying a medieval skeleton. And for Anita Rodini and her co-workers, the eye-opening moment is one that few could have predicted when their research began. Initially, the team planned to study teeth on Earth at the location analyzing any buildup of plaque to learn more about the diet and oral hygiene of women who lived so long ago. However, the specialists ended up finding so much more. You see, the researchers discovered something strange when looking at the plaque under the microscope. The substance was flecked with a brilliant blue pigment, and this flash of color understandably grabbed attention. But what was the cause of this shade? Amazingly, the answer appears to reveal incredible truths about the women who lived at Dalhaim and their important role in medieval society. Even with all the technology that we have on offer today, the past still contains many mysteries that are yet to be revealed. And while ruined buildings and forgotten texts can tell us much about the world that came before us, there are many other ways to learn what life was like in ancient times. Fascinatingly, one of these avenues is the study of bones. Indeed, we can discern a great deal about people by investigating their skeletal remains. For example, the position and location of bones can tell us how and where communities lived and worked. A skeleton's condition can also give us valuable insights into an individual's death. Now though, researchers are applying a different type of analysis to ancient remains with fascinating results. And that takes us back to the ancient monastery that once stood in the Dalheim region of Western Germany. Although experts believe that the area may have been home to a community of women as early as the 10th century AD, the precise date of the building's construction has been lost to time. Additionally, the monastery of Dalheim's earliest written records dates to 1244 AD. Aside from that, we know very little about the building and the people who lived there before it was destroyed in the 14th century, possibly as a result of a series of nearby battles. It is thought that in Psalm 14 women lived and prayed within the walls of the monastery. Then, a group of archaeologists from the Westphalian Museum of Archaeology in Hern, Germany, set out to excavate the monastery's site from 1988 to 1991. One of the artifacts they found was the skeleton of a woman who had been buried in a cemetery nearby. The woman's first skeleton exhibited no obvious signs of infection or trauma, and there was no evidence that she had engaged in any strenuous manual labor during her lifetime. However, researchers were unable to find anything particularly remarkable about the woman's remains. Radiocarbon dating initially suggested that she passed away sometime between 997 and 1162 AD experts say that the women who lived in monasteries, like the one adult Haim, frequently came from aristocratic and noble backgrounds, which would explain the apparent lack of physical activity. It was also determined that the woman was between the ages of 45 and 60 when she died, including pollen fibers, spores, and microcharcoal. Initially, though, the researchers studying the doll, Heim woman's dental calculus were looking for different things. University of York archaeologist Rodini hoped to identify starch granules within the deposits. For instance, Christina Warriner, an anthropologist from Germany's Max Planck Institute, wanted to get a closer look at some ancient bacteria, but Rodini was ultimately in for a shock. While working in her York laboratory, she began using acid to slowly dissolve the calculus from the doll, Haim woman's teeth. And when she looked under the microscope, she discovered something astonishing. There scattered through the fossilized plaque were hundreds of vibrant blue flecks. It came as a complete surprise as the calculus dissolved. It released hundreds of tiny blue particles, Rodini said in a statement released by the Max Planck Institute in January 2019. At first, however, the researchers had no idea what the strange substance could be. Can you imagine the kind of cold calls 
we had to make in the beginning, Warner told The Atlantic in 2019. Hi, I'm working on this thing with teeth. It's about 1,000 years old, and it has blue stuff in it. Can you help me? People thought we were crazy, Warner continued. We tried reaching out to physicists, and they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. We tried reaching out to people working in art restoration, and they were like, why are you working with plaque? Eventually, however, the researchers' perseverance paid off using spectrographic analysis of the scientific method that studies the spectrum of light. Researchers were finally able to identify the substance found on the dull, heim woman's teeth. It appeared to be a type of pigment known as ultramarine. And according to experts, this brilliant color was once created by crushing pieces of the semi-precious stone lapis lazuli. But during the dull, Himes woman's lifetime, lapis lazuli was very rare. It could only be sourced from a particular region in Afghanistan, meaning examples of the stone were then considered as valuable as gold and understandably, lapis lazuli's vibrant blue color meant that it was particularly treasured in the art world. In later centuries, artists would use ultramarine to add vivid colors to the robes of the Virgin Mary in many Renaissance paintings. Some claim that Michelangelo even ordered the pigment while painting the Sistine Chapel, but he reportedly ran out of money to pay for the pricey resource. So how did such a pricey item get to a monastery in rural Germany? According to historian Michael McCormick, the doll Hain woman got the pigment through a fascinating ancient trade route. She was connected to a vast through the trading centers of Byzantine Constantinople and Islamic Egypt. According to the Max Planck Institute statement, McCormick said this, but even though this might explain how the pigment got to Germany, it still doesn't answer the question of why it had traveled so far. However, it should be noted that ultramarine was prevalent in monasteries at the time. In point of fact, along with gold leaf, it was used to create illuminated manuscripts, which are a type of text with elaborate decorations and illustrations in vibrant colors. Even though monasteries were frequently used to create illuminated manuscripts, only exceptionally skilled scribes and painters would have been permitted to use the valuable ultramarine. In the statement, historian Allison Beach explained that many people had previously assumed that all of these masters were men. Experts say that it was common practice during the medieval period for those working on illuminated manuscripts to decline to sign their work, probably out of humility. This seems to have been especially true for female scribes, but many people have taken this as evidence that women never worked in this field. Then, in January 2019, Rodini and her colleagues published a study outlining their analysis, which found that only 15 of the manuscripts found in monasteries inhabited by women contained established female authors. Or the possibility that the woman had ingested lapis lazuli as medicine at some point. But this explanation also came with its problems. Although lapis lazuli is known to have been used as a medicine since the first century, there is little evidence to suggest that ingesting the stone was a common practice in Germany at the time. Furthermore, the particles found on the doll, hind woman's teeth, were very small, suggesting that they had been intentionally ground into pigment and the study additionally claims that the ultramarine pigment was distributed throughout the plaque, a pattern that suggested multiple exposures rather than just one ingestion. So the researchers also considered the possibility that the woman had come into contact with the pigment while cleaning. Maybe she had even been involved in its preparation, yet this theory ultimately fell by the wayside according to the study. The process of refining lapis lazuli into pigment required a specific process that is thought to have been unique to the Arab world at the time. It seems likely then that the ultramarine that arrived at the monastery had been the final article. So having considered and dismissed a variety of different scenarios, the study concluded that there was only one likely explanation for how the pigment got onto the woman's teeth. And if the interpretation bears out, it could yet transform our understanding of women's role within the medieval world, based on the distribution of the pigment in her mouth. We concluded that the most likely scenario was that she was painting with the pigment and licking the end of the brush while painting microbiologist Monica Trump explained in the statement from the Max Planck Institute. And amazingly, 
It's not the first time that evidence has emerged to suggest that women may have been respected scribes in medieval society. Beach has uncovered 12th century letters that detail a commission undertaken by a woman known only as an inhabitant of a monastery located just 40 miles away from Dahl home in the missives. A monk from a male monastery asks to produce an illuminated manuscript using luxurious materials such as silk and leather. And in the study, researchers noted the significance of such important work being outsourced to female scribes. In particular, this suggests that the women of the region may have already enjoyed a formidable reputation as artists before the 12th century, and Beach has discovered yet more evidence of female scribes using lapis lazuli as a pigment. This time it came in the form of a German book dating to around 1200 AD, making this the earliest example of the practice ever uncovered in the region. All in all, then these findings could have far-reaching implications for the study of women in the medieval arts. Here we have direct evidence of a woman, not just painting, but painting with a very rare and expensive pigment, and at a very out of the way, Place Warner explained this woman's story could have remained hidden forever without the use of these techniques. What's more, owing to the fire that ultimately destroyed the Dal High Monastery Rodini and her co-workers' discovery, could represent the only surviving example of this kind of activity. In other words, if the researchers had not stumbled across the pigment in the skeleton's teeth, we may never have suspected that this community of women was known for more than their religious devotion. Taking all of this into consideration, then future studies of dental calculus may prove similarly enlightening. Our work strongly points to the possibility of using microscopic particles in tuned ancient tartar to track the artists of ancient times. Rodini Warriner and Trump wrote in the January 2019 article for Fees. It also suggests that this method could be used to track other dusty crafts and reveal the occult workers behind many forms of art. The doll's body is now on display at the University of Zurich Institute of Evolutionary Medicine in Switzerland, where it was previously housed. In the meantime, Warner keeps on looking at particles frozen and antiquated plaque finding, all that from bits of fleece to opium buildup concealed inside unexpectedly. However, she takes note that analysts rehearsing many years, or even hundreds of years, from now might not have such a lot of karma with the skeletons of today. It appears to have caught the attention of contemporary dentists. She jokingly complained to The Atlantic that they aren't thinking about archaeologists in the future. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.